going on guys another morning here and uh, we're back at one of my favorite sites here in I guess North Pasco just west of my farm and as you see behind me here we've got my trusty John Deere and you know what they say if it's not a deer it's a dog so last time I was here and I made a video we um, were basically showing y'all how well this place developed how well the ground covers were doing and this is the site with all the swales so I received a lot of questions a lot of emails how do you mark a swale how do you install a swale? So I'm gonna give you a little bit of the basic lowdown. We're not actually gonna dig the swale. They're not ready for another swale here, but we'll lay out that level contour line in the landscape for you. And there's a couple other things on this site I wanna show you. So, so since I was here last, a lot of this mulch has just showed up. You know, I mean, these were just recently dumped and you can see how well this site is developing. Those are all lemongrasses with graceful bamboo planted all the way along that first swale as we come in the property, so. The ground covers have really developed here nicely. The site's coming along. I mean, you know, here we are four weeks after that video and things are really going nuts. standing on the property we're about mid midpoint up the land you know towards that north side this is south pointing down towards us and it topography kind of starts to drop out down over here and you can see just down here at the bottom we've already installed a swale um, what we did do on these swales here is we um, we did fill them with mulch you know that's helping to retain a little bit more There's moisture so, as you can see I have a Bosch laser, laser level here and I have my flags so these are what I'm gonna use to mark my points on that contour line in the landscape so this is a eye that's going to read off of this laser and it's going to show me that level point in the land so really what i'm finding is i'm finding that level point across the contour and i'll kind of show you how we do that so come on down the hill with me here now we can go as far down as we want to to find that level line in the land so let's say right here is where we decide to put our next swale in you know wherever that is that's just pointing that perfectly level line out here into the landscape so when i lift this that's where that is level. So, you know, that laser up there on the hill was about here. As you can see, it's about two feet above my head. So what I'm gonna wanna do with this, I'm gonna wanna pull this off of the, I believe they call this a stadium, and put it up on top. And I wanna find that beep again. And I'm gonna kinda just get it semi-tight. And you can hear how it's beeping really fast. The faster it beeps, the closer I am to actually being level. You hear that beep changed? So on the back side of this, there's actually three little lights. There's this red light on the top that shows you too high. There's this red light on the bottom that shows you too low. And there's a blue light in the center. So when you hear that most steady beep, that's showing you you're closest to being level. So right there is pretty much dead level. And I really like just using this piece of irrigation pipe to hold on to these flags. And these are just cheap you know, irrigation flags. We use these all the time. And we'll use these to mark that line in the landscape. So I'll put that first one right here. And now, you know, I can go over here, but that's not gonna be level. So I'm gonna take this until I find that level point again. We're gonna keep going down that hill. Look at that. So we're a little low. You wanna watch that you're not on a stump or something. You know, I'm just a little high. I'm dead perfect right here. And there is a little level ball on the top of this that's gonna help me find that mark. And I'll put another one right here. And these are about six foot apart. So let's come on up the hill again. I can go this way. I'm not gonna find it this way. You know, and I'm not making these lines. I'm just following the natural lines of the landscape. So it's a tad high. You can hurt it. You heard it transition and beep. So it just went from that really fast beep to that more of a steady beep. That means we're perfectly level. And you can see, I mean, you know, right now I'm probably 75 feet from that tripod up there on the hill. And you can do this with an A-frame too. I built an A-frame, we've done swales that way. It's definitely not as accurate. You know, if I prefer this, obviously now that I own this, I'm not gonna use that A-frame. I don't use it a lot, so this gives me an excuse to take it out and actually use it. You know, we are in Florida. We do not have a lot of contour. 
we do not have a lot of reasons for a swale. This is a, a very unique site that actually where this would apply. So you can see here, we've got four of them going across the landscape and I'll put two more in the ground for you. So we've put seven flags in the ground, you know, so if I wanted to stop and slow that water from coming down this hill and we didn't already have a swale right here, you know, we potentially could put a swale right here in this place. So what we would typically do, and you saw I have my John Deere out there on the little intro on the track, on the uh, trailer outside, we would come in and we would dig this out. So we'd remove all the mulch or we'd do it before we mulch this space. And we'd come in about two feet to a foot before that flag and we'd dig the equal amount to the backside of the flag. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to dig a perfect ditch and we're gonna put all that dirt on the bottom side. So that's exactly what we did over here. We marked out with the flags. We came in with the tractor, we dug, we put everything down on the bottom side. And on this one in particular, we planted bamboo, we planted lemongrass, and we could see we have a very dense ground cover of sunshine mimosa. And those are two ground covers that I definitely talk about a lot. You could see we use the perennial peanut here on this one, and the rabbits are eating it. It's probably because it's the closest to the, you know, the undeveloped part of the yard over here. You know, this, this part of the land where we haven't you know, really taking a lot of the invasive brush. We've left some habitat for those native species that are here. It's getting eaten, you know, eventually I think the mimosa is gonna come up and just completely come over that peanut once it really establishes. Now, when we did this swale, I talked about in my last video, we filled them with mulch. This swale was just filled with mulch to probably about here, you know, early June. So that's how much that mulch has broken down, you know, and it's just a sponge, you know, here in the center. The mycelium is really strong. And you can see there, this is pretty much pure mulch in this ditch. So, you know, you wouldn't need to do that if you're in an area that has a little bit more clay, but if you're in a very sandy area like we are here in Florida, putting that mulch in there helps to retain that moisture for longer. So I've never seen these swales hold water. You know, if, if it was an issue, if we did have clay-based soils, we'd definitely have to take that into account. We'd need some type of spillway. We'd need some type of overflow in that swale. We don't want it to break, you know, water to come over the top of the swale and actually break that berm on us. So we haven't had that issue here. What we did have was a serious erosion problem that we've solved. Um, you know, in just a, under a year here on being on this site, we've installed nine swales. We had major erosion problems, all the organic matter, all of that silt, used to end up in that roadway after a heavy storm, after our monsoonal rains. We're not getting that problem anymore. Just yesterday, we had a monsoonal rain here. There's no signs of erosion. Now, if we walk down there to the far east side of the site where we haven't done any of this work, it's completely eroded. All that organic matter is down in the ditch. The soil is exposed. I mean, you know, you're seeing invasive species, weeds coming up in those places. You know, nature's gonna find a way. It's completely eroded that space, so. I hope you guys got something out of this little swale intro. Um, I don't think I really skipped any points, but if I did, put them in the comments, you know, and I'll probably, next time I'm actually installing a swale, we'll record, you know, that whole entire, you know, installation process with the tractor so you guys get a little bit more of a how-to on that. And so I hope you guys are liking my videos. Please like, subscribe. Sharing is caring. We appreciate it.